buddy i know it's been a uh, a long time since i've uh, made a video and that's uh because as you guys can see a lot has changed over the past year or so or nine months since i made my last video all right guys so basically i'm gonna give you a quick rundown before we go ahead and uh head on the road to work because i gotta get there soon i gotta get gas as well as uh get my daily red bull you guys know how that goes which is very unhealthy but you know it keeps me moving so <laughs> all right guys so as you can see no engine cover because realistically i can't fit it anymore so i'll leave a mod list all the way down in the description uh for you guys to take a look at as it's been basically it went from stage two air and take down pipe just all the way balls to the wall um as most of you guys can tell so right here uh we got an upgrade charge pipe that's just a need need that and within this charge pipe as you see these hoses here uh i now have methanol injection um and that's the route i went instead of port injection which honestly i will be completely honest with you guys i honestly regret because not many tuners tune for meth so it's a little bit of a pain but we were able to get this dialed in. I actually went with Kerry Jordan for the tune, as well as Griffin built. Kind of went between both of them. So I got like a map from Kerry Jordan and then a uh, you know map as well from Griffin built, which I'll leave both of their uh, info in the uh, description below. So as you guys can see down here, I now have a pure 850 uh, hybrid turbo. It's hard to see, but it's down there. So that's making most of the power that I'm making now, of course, is that's the main component for making power on these cars. And then next, as you guys can see, I also, of course, have just a uh, kind of a custom intake setup. So this boot here, as well as this part right here is from Mode. This filters from Turner Motorsports. So we had to do some kind of custom work as well as with the uh, heat shield here um, as there is not really a direct way to make all this work, which is, you know, it's all right. It's not the end of the world. Over here, got a Burger More Sports catch can, um, just because pushing a lot more boost, gonna get a little bit more blow by, so this definitely helps. And also here on this charge pipe, you guys can see this little, uh, you know, hob switch here. This is actually for my uh, Stage Three Precision Race Works low pressure fuel pump, uh, which I ended up needing um, just after I started getting towards the top of the power range with this car. And then back there, you see that silver pump there? That is going to be my uh, Dorch Stage 2 high pressure fuel pump that I also have correlating with this fuel pump. So I'll make sure I have enough fuel because you can have all the air in the world, but you need to make sure you have the right fuel as well. And through here, guys, I basically just have some simple like stage one, I believe, or step one, I should say, sorry, uh, colder spark plugs with some dining coil packs, which are great, great options for this car. And then back there, you see that Ross Racing logo. I actually got this recommended to me by Kern. You guys know Kern 417. Guys, a little legend when it comes to these cars and basically what mods you should do what you shouldn't do etc so i ended up getting a ross racing pcb delete kit because my pcb uh diaphragm was actually shredded so that's right i went with that all right guys that's pretty much it under the hood so you can step back look at the car um some new changes on the outside as well got some apex uh, i believe these are the, yeah some tents a little dirty right now just so don't mind, judge the car it's a little dirty it's been raining a lot so i uh, got some max and side skirts uh back here we got the turner more sport carbon fiber uh rear um spoiler and then down here we just have a gloss black Turnmo Sport slash ECS tuning uh, diffuser, and then you see those tips there. There's a Turnmo Sport. This is the Turnmo Sport three-inch uh, full stainless steel exhaust. And also, guys, real quick, shout out to my uh, clothing brand Outcast. If you guys have yet to follow Outcast or get anything from Outcast, check the link in the description, man. It really helps out the channel. I really do appreciate it. So we checked the methanol level. What's up, y'all? And we are good. Um, so let's go ahead, hop in here. All right, guys. So same thing here. Don't mind the dust. I'm literally about to do a full detail as it's been in storage pretty much all winter. Now it's starting to get finally warm again. So uh, what I have here now is a uh, LED race wheel, uh, mostly carbon fiber, uh, as you guys can see. Try to keep a kind of more sleek aesthetic with the uh, perforated leather. Didn't want to go too crazy because I could have optioned this honestly with full carbon, like the entire wheel <laughs> being carbon fiber, but I didn't see that being suitable as I need something to grip, you know what I mean? This carbon fiber is more of a slippery surface. And then back here, guys, you can see this is just my uh, boost controller for my methanol injection, basically. And behind that, I now have the 6WB cluster. So as you guys can see, I'll just quickly uh, turn on the accessory real quick. Kind of comes up, tells you your service to in the middle. Um, chassis code, that's for my coilovers. No big deal. Um, but yeah, let me go ahead and... Let's get this party started. So I'm gonna roll down the windows. See, it's 64 degrees outside, so I'm gonna cook it in here. And let's start it. All right, everybody. So as you can see, 
I can clearly still talk. I can like hear myself talk. I mean, and that wasn't what it used to be because what I used to have before was the M Performance um, exhaust, which was like the factory MPPSK kit and Performance Power and Sound kit. And from there, I had it basically the valves were stuck open. I mean, it was just ball, like just straight through all the way. So the turbo for exhaust, even though it's still loud, it's definitely not quiet. I could definitely at least hear or talk to you guys if that makes sense at all. And as you can see, the LED race lights are now lit up. Got RPMs, miles per hour, um, throttle position, current temperature, which is 93 degrees, going up and up and up. Battery voltage, boost and bar. And then you got uh, zero to 60. You also get some track options. So yeah, this is a very good wheel. I'm only this below. It's actually from Unleash Customs. Um, main reason I didn't want to go with the genuine OEM one was more or less there was more work entailed with you know wiring all the way across the dash and down there. This more or less is just a wireless setup. So it's just OBD connected down there, which is perfect. All right, guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in drive. I'm gonna start the drive off in comfort and uh, in automatic, just so while the uh, car warms up so as you guys can hear while driving I'm not sure if it's too windy so I'm gonna roll this up just a little bit but um it's actually not that bad of a uh, drive in the sense of even with making about 650 wheel right now it's actually not that bad of a uh, drivability experience on a daily driver aspect at least when you're in comfort mode um, it's still a very comfortable drive um, with the ECS coilovers they're great now a topic I want to start talking about uh, just while driving which I probably will get into more detail later on um, in another video but recently just because of the amount of power I have been making which again that's about I'm, I'm in like the 600 range I just, the car has not been dynoed but this is kind of going off more or less what Kerry Jordan um, one of my tuners told me I was making just based off of like comparing to pre other cars that he's done similar modifications similar tunes to um, I'm at least torque wise I'm for sure within like the 680 ish like 670 ish foot pound range which if you guys do not know that is technically speaking well over the rated torque for the um, 8h uh, p50 the transmission the uh, zf8 that I have in this car so with that being said um a lot of people have of course done 700 800 i mean you, you name it with the stock transmission and they're still fine to this day but some people have done the stage 2 tune and completely blown their transmission so what i've recently been experiencing it's only really been on slightly hotter days um since it's been winter obviously the past couple months is third and sixth gear between around two to three k rpms when i'm just slowly accelerating it will start to buckle up it will start to buckle up and have an issue um, as far as just, you know, drivability goes. So I've noticed that's always after I do like a really hard pull and when it's like hotter out. So, I mean, across the board, I definitely need to look into upgrading the transmission, whether I do the uh, HP 70 or I do um, the PDS or pure drive chain solution, like stage one full transmission upgrade. I haven't really decided yet because I'm trying to balance price, longevity, how the install is. Um, Etc. But what I have noticed also recently after doing some research and actually again shout out to Kern uh, 417 on this one was More or less. I didn't even think or process the fact that I Mean some of my issue right now could be just mainly because of transmission temps and just because it's starting to get hotter out um, The way our transmission cooler is on this car It's more or less a transmission heater than it is a cooler just how close it is to the engine and once you're making more power It gets even hotter. So um, he brought up a video with the bigger motorsports, uh, basically upgraded with a uh, transmission cooler. And I was like, well, I mean, that honestly might be a, a good route for me because I mean, that's only, I mean, you know, what, 600 bucks, it's some insurance and that will definitely get your temps down to up to about 30, 35 degrees cooler over stock, which that definitely might help my bucking issue because it doesn't do it all the time. It's only after I'm really hard on the car and it's hot out is when it really starts to do that weird bucking issue in third and fourth gear. But whenever it's colder out, like let's say 40 degrees outside and I'm doing a lot of pulls, no issues. It's because it's colder outside. So a lot of cold air gets over the cooler. Um, it gets rid of that heat. So yeah, if you guys have any opinions on that, uh, please feel free to leave a comment down in the uh, 
description below which route I may go, you know, whether it's, you know, I'm definitely doing the trains, which is a cool upgrade no matter what, but I'm kind of stuck on doing one of three things, basically either building the transmission as far as like the internals of my stock transmission, building that out. Um, two would be doing a uh, HP70, which is basically the big brother of this transmission I have in my car from the uh, diesel engines, which hold a lot more torque. Uh, that's not a 100% direct fit. There's some slight modifications you have to do, so that's kind of like the difficulty with that is more or less the install because um, it's not a direct 100% fit, as well as the uh, tuning aspect of it is a little bit difficult. But I believe uh, XHP is coming out with a solution for that, or they might already have a solution for that. I'm sorry. And last but not least, which is the most expensive, but the most easy and probably like quality longevity wise would be instead of getting like a used HP70, would be getting a pure drivetrain solutions pre built HP50. Um, with a billet, billet everything. I mean, it's a 100% quality product, but I mean, at that point, that's also like six, 6,500-ish um, range for that full transmission. Today, yeah, guys, I'm kind of stuck, so I guess what I'm gonna do now is I'm mainly gonna focus on just getting the transmission cooler upgrade, um, which I already ordered that. That should be here in the next couple weeks, I believe, because uh, Bergen Horse was actually on back order with it. So once that comes in, I mean, I'll be golden, be solid. Um, we'll be able to definitely go ahead and uh, test that out, see if that fixes my issue. And if I have no more bucking issues, then cool. I'm, I'm cool, because I'm honestly, I'm kind of I'm kind of chilling on the setup for now. So I'm eventually gonna probably upgrade the transmission to one of those three options, just when I decide to probably do like a full frame turbo. Um, I'll take off the meth kit and do port injection instead, upgrade a manifold, etc. When I go that route, like when I'm talking like 850, 900 horsepower range that I'm gonna be looking for, maybe eventually one day, um, that's when I'm looking to the actual transmission itself upgrade. But as far as now, I think I'm gonna try the transmission cooler upgrade, see if that helps anything. <laughs> Not sure if you guys can hear me that well because I do have the windows down, but uh, right now um, I'm in Sport Plus, which I've been kind of battling with, with more or less. So I'm just like trying to do like fun little pulls and kind of hear the car. I'll do uh, Sport Plus as I have verbals on in Sport Plus, but as far as doing actual pulls, I need to uh, go ahead and do uh, PSC off when I'm doing actual pulls because I'm making so much power now that the car is having an issue and it's killing itself basically it's doing its own and radar going crazy actually speaking about the uh, 6wb cluster they have now so you can see now that i'm in like dsc off or sport plus it is in its like red sport gauges which this actually does have a built-in shift light in it which is actually kind of cool which i didn't know until i well got it installed and tried it so it's kind of funny that i i got this steering wheel more or less for these shift lights which which was a before i got this cluster which honestly knowing what i know now i mean it doesn't bother me i do still like the flat bottom i probably would have still gotten a steering wheel upgrade but i probably wouldn't have gotten the uh the led shift light option if i knew that i was gonna eventually get that and that had a shift light in it which is kind of cool but yeah in sales no pops nothing which honestly as i'm starting to get older and i've had the car a lot longer i'm starting to honestly kind of like that i kind of bounce back and forth between it like sport plus with purples and then you see off which doesn't have any purples um i kind of like it both honestly um because more with dsc off you hear that pure 50 turbo sound a lot more there's not a lot of interruption with the pops and bangs uh you just get a lot of uh decel on the turbo and it sounds really nice just timing boost and everything so that I won't be making as much power when I have 93 in the car. I'm um, sorry guys, it's been loud without well, the windows down, sorry. But uh, I won't adjust as well with the 93 in the car, won't have as much power as 93 in the car um, with this turbo and the meth setup. So this is more or less, I think it's at like 500, maybe 520 when it's on 93. Um, even with the Pure 850 and everything, but it gets uh, most of its power besides the turbo from the 85 as well. All right, I'm just getting a little top off. Yep. All right, put it back. And that was $26. I had to top off my tank on that. It wasn't fully empty, I was that little under half a tank. The car is definitely gonna be happy, not gonna be pulling as much timing, which I'm, honestly, I'm not sure if you guys also have experienced this, if you have a 340 or maybe all BMWs do this. 
um, or maybe just the way the tune set up, but anytime I'm under half a tank, like it doesn't matter what it is, anytime I'm under half a tank, it could be the same fuel, everything, and I'm not pulling the same amount of power at all. I can feel it cutting back. It's only when I'm under half a tank though. Um, and I don't know if it's like built into the car as from factory to try and like save fuel, get better fuel mileage as, you know, obviously if you're doing a uh, full blown pull at, you know, like a hundred miles left in the tank, I mean, the car wants to keep saving gas so it doesn't run out of gas, which I understand that completely, but I always find that weird. So instead of just waiting till empty sometimes, more or less, I'll just get to like either half a tank or like a quarter of a tank and I will just top it off from there. I know I never run it dry, I guess more what I'm trying to get at. about it most is with the exhaust at least is I mean I can full on not full on like when it's full throttle it's still screaming loud but more or less the tone of it sounds a lot better to where I can actually talk to you guys and hear you guys on your ass boy these motherfuckers need to move there's them boys there's them boys oh girl actually racetrack slash drag strip and I hate when people are in front of me because I can't even gas it up here because hey there's no speed limits on on ramps bro that's kind of chalked it's kind of chalked not gonna lie Nah, but the cops in our, in our area are relatively chill, to be honest. I mean, it depends on exactly what city you're in, but as far as like the sheriffs go, um, sheriff's deputies go, um, yeah, most cities around here are chill. So unless you're doing some like real dumb shit, like real dumb shit, you're, you're pretty much fine. Oh, what the hell? One, two, three, where they go? What? say I have noticed with uh, just these cars in general which I mean again obviously if you're getting like a custom tune done most likely can adjust it. Um, but it is very very third gear happy um, let's try doing a pool let's say right now in fourth gear or fifth or whatever it is if you're like really high up in speed it's not that it doesn't like it it's just it's not as much of a uh, like an oomph um, if that makes sense so more or less like that's why you always want a day log in third gear I mean for most BMWs or most cars honestly is third gear is always supposed to be like the happy the happy gear because for example let's say I'm in yeah fourth gear around a little over 3k rpms and I, and I just like gas it a little bit you know, that was a very like 20-30% throttle tap. You know, it's still pulled, but not much. But for whatever reason, now that I'm down here, I'll drop it on a slow down, drop into third, around the same RPM. And I get the same throttle. It 
pulls a lot harder, which I just find kind of strange. If you guys have any questions or anything about my build or what you guys want to see next, uh, please feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. Again, uh, please, please go check out my clothing brand. Uh, that is Outcast Crew. That is linked in the description below as well. Uh, with that being said, got some, a lot of content coming soon. It's getting warmer out, car meets, car shows, etc. Uh, I'm going to be doing more, of course, to this car for the build. Like I mentioned, I'm going to be the next project trying to tackle is definitely mainly going to be with the transmission, whether that's the transmission cooler, which I'm probably going to do inevitably either way. Uh, but whether that's just change the cooler, stick with the uh, stock transmission I have now and call it a day and just kind of stay around this power level or who knows if uh, if speed tech or big boost wants to do, uh, you know, send me a either a bottom mount or top mount turbo kit. Hey, I might honestly just go ahead and go big go big or go home and just go top mount uh, upgrade the transmission you know it's just more or less a battle with uh trying to be financially smart too because um as most of you guys know i mean i've done all this myself and i mean i'm a 19 year old kid fresh out of high school um college student and i work full time so more or less this whole car all the parts on it i mean i've spent over like sixteen thousand dollars on this car beside like parts wise um just getting it to the point it's at now with you know turbo um other parts etc i mean wheels just in general everything across the timeline i've had this car spent a lot of money so it's a process of course you know it's pay to play that's all it is so I'm trying to make sure i do this uh financially smart way you know if i can get away with uh transmission upgrade whether that's again the full transmission drivetrain solution upgrade from uh you know pure, pure drivetrain solutions um or if i could just get away with maybe doing something like the internal clutch pack upgrade and still be safe and reliable that's a lot cheaper i might do that route so i'm gonna go ahead and let you guys go for today but i really appreciate it make sure you like comment and subscribe follow me on my social medias and uh, i'll see you guys next time deuces